Rub up your engines! Jonathan Anderson, I had sugar dumped in my gas tank, but I haven't started it yet. What should I look out for? Well, definitely don't start it. Oh, that sugar is going to burn in the engine. It'll ruin the fuel injectors, crystallize in the engine. Tow it to a garage if you're not going to work on yourself. Have them remove the gas tank and drain it and clean it all out. Just to be on the safe side, I'd say remove the fuel filter when the new tank is in turn the key and let it pump whatever's in the line out through the filter that's not there then to put the filter back on and then run it you don't want to start it like if a car's flooded you see it's underwater don't go in there and always oh, start it and drive no maybe it isn't ruined because it hasn't been electricity sent to the computer and didn't fry it yet you see a flooded car don't start it tow it to a mechanic or if you're a mechanic tow it home Drain all the fluids. Dry all the computers with air dryers. Pray it's not damaged. But once you start it and it's energized, it's too late. George Charleston said, Would you recommend a Jeep Wrangler or a Toyota Tacoma for daily driving and off-roading? Well, you know, how serious are you going off-roading? And are you talking both of them being four-wheel drive vehicles or just two-wheel drive vehicles? You can get them either way. The Toyotas can run forever. The Jeep is more set up for off-road, but of course it's going to brake faster because it's a Jeep. And then when you go off-road, it'll brake even faster than normally driving on the roads, where the Tacoma is going to last a lot longer. But after all, the Tacoma is a pickup truck. It's made as a pickup truck. It's not made as an off-road vehicle. Certainly people take them off-road, but a Jeep is more designed that way. But it's not going to last as long, let me tell you. You'd have to get four-wheel drive in a Jeep if you're planning on taking an off-road. Now, how serious off-road are you? If you're a little bit okay. You want to do rock crawling and stuff, you're going to have to get a Jeep all-wheel drive and do some mods. It gets expensive. It's an expensive game if you seriously go off-road. Luis says, I have exhaust seems coming in from the trunk of my IS 400. How's it entering my trunk and my cabin? Okay, exhaust fumes getting in a trunk. You got to have a hole in your exhaust system somewhere. It's just the way that it goes. Now, do you hear a loud exhaust or not? If you hear a loud exhaust, go under there and find out where the hole is and get it fixed. And it would be before the muffler because you hear the noise. Now, if the hole is after the muffler, you won't hear any noise, but you'll smell it. In which case, you have to feel around, jack it up, see where the hole's coming from. But it would have to be after the muffler, because the muffler muffles the sound. You'd smell it, but you wouldn't hear any noise. So, you know, jack it up, start it up, see if you can hear leaks. Or if you can't, feel for them and see what's leaking. You didn't say what year it was. Cars get old, eventually they rust, and you got to replace parts. So, before or after the muffler, depending on the noise. Troy Donhauser says, does chicken grease work for gas in a Toyota? Well, of course not. <laughs> you can't use any kind of grease, oil, French fry oil for gasoline. Now, you can for diesel if you know what you're doing. If you watch that video that I made a few weeks ago, Portuguese guy from the Azores. For 30 years, he's been driving Volkswagens that he converted to run on the waste oil from Portuguese restaurants. And he didn't even have any kind of real filtration heating unit. He just put them in a 100-gallon vat, let them sit for 90 days, and siphoned the cooking oil off the top and ran it in the trunk with a little heater from the hot water heater and drove around. That thing was fast, and it smelled like french fries coming out of the back. It is doable with actually relatively small modifications. You'd be surprised. Now, it has a little bit less power than regular diesel, but in this case, he had a Jetta Turbo, and that turbo still had tons of acceleration, and it ran perfectly fine. But you can't do it in a gasoline car. Gasoline needs gasoline. Aaron says, Scotty, got a 2016 Rogue, 75,000 miles. There's oil in the spark plug. Well, help. All right. Well, get a valve cover gasket kit that has the spark plug tube seals in it, too. Take it apart. Pry the spark tube seals out of the top when you take it off. Put new ones in. Put the new gasket and put it in. It'll stop leaking. What happens is the valve cover gasket seals the outside so it doesn't leak on the engine. But inside are the two holes where the spark plug's going. And the seals there go bad, and then you get oil on top of them. Not that hard to do on most cars. Just make sure when you buy the kit, make sure you get the valve cover set that includes spark plug tube seals. Because if it doesn't, then you won't get them. And a lot of the kits don't come with them. Make sure. All the auto parts stores can get them for you, but make sure you want the one that has the seals in it. Yomi says, hey, love the channel. I got a 2022 Honda HRV that was made in Mexico. Should I be concerned? Well, personally, I'm always concerned about them made there because their quality control isn't that great. But on the other hand, it's Honda. And I found that Honda and Toyota, when they get the stuff made in Mexico, they keep their quality up a lot higher than the American stuff. Ford Bronco, Sports 
has a lot of problems. Chrysler built a lot of cars in Mexico. They had a lot of problems with them. But I've seen Toyotas and Hondas made in Mexico that really didn't have any problems. Realize this. They're not making the engines and transmissions there. They still come from Japan. They just put them together there. It's like they're building them, but they're not manufacturing them. So it's not as big of a worry. NYC Car Review says, can you put automatic transmission fluid in a Honda power steering pump? You can, but I wouldn't. <laughs> Hondas, for some weird reason, need the Honda power steering fluid. Go to an auto power store, you'll see the power steering fluid. Power steering, they'll have a special little bottle that'll say Honda power steering fluid. It's slightly different. Now, in a pinch, if you were stuck in the middle of nowhere and it didn't work, you could put it in, it would work okay. But the problem is, it would wear and often cause leaks on the Hondas. Hondas are very particular about both their power steering fluid. And their automatic transmission fluid. If I owned a Honda, I don't, I own Toyota, but if I owned a Honda, I would get the dealer original equipment, power steering fluid, and transmission fluid when I change stuff out. I would not use generic. But I mean, in the case of your power steering fluid, you can go to any auto parts stores and they got cans that say power steering fluid for Hondas only, and that's what you buy. And they all sell them, AutoZone, you name it, the Pep Boys, they all sell the stuff. Yeah, I'd say, Scotty, there was no oil in a 2014 Kia Sorento with no leaks. My brother put too much oil in, now it leaks oil. What needs to be done? Help. Well, first thing you got to do is take out the extra and then pray it didn't do any damages. I don't know how much extra oil he put in. If you put in a quart or so, it's not really going to hurt things, but it can make the seals leak from extra pressure. Now, if it's just a little bit and the seals were just leaking, when you get it back to normal, they'll stop leaking. But if you put way too much, the seals, instead of just leaking through the seals, they'll actually pop out. They fit in a little recess and they will pop out of the recess. Then it'll leak forever. You've got to take the whole engine apart, pull it out of the car, change the rear main seal, the front main seal. It is a pain in the butt. And if he really, really overfilled it like three or four quarts too much, it can actually bend the piston rods because, of course, the pistons go up and down. And normally they're pushing against a mixture of air and fuel. But if they're pushing against oil, the oil does not compress much and then the piston still has to go up and down so the piston rod bends because something's got to give and the weakest thing is the piston rod so it'll bend and when you have a bent piston rod you got to take the whole engine apart and rebuild it which is a very expensive endeavor that's why you do not want to have too much oil yeah you don't want to have too little the engine might blow up from lack of lubrication but too much can do just as much damage fire starts says scotty i got a 2016 vw passat 70k miles when i drive and brake from 80 the wheel shakes a lot you need to change your brake rotors and your pads brake rotors they're kind of like steel pie plates. When you step on the brakes, they're squeezed. When they're warped, now they don't go like this. They go a few thousands of an inch. I'm exaggerating. But when they do that, it makes a steering wheel shake. You can go any place and buy them. They sell them all over the place. You don't need to go to Volkswagen buy the ridiculously expensive German stuff. You can go to any auto parts store and get parts for them. A lot lower price than what the Germans are selling. You need to change the rotors and the brakes because they're warped and both are warped. The pads are warped. The rotors are warped. It's probably just the front ones because the front ones, when you step on it in a wheel shakes the front rotors if the back rotors are warped instead of the wheel shaking your pedal will pulse because that's the back ones and the pedal will pulse up and down but if it's your steering wheel it's the front rotors and pads Pink pants said scotty what should i consider buying a subaru outback for canadian conditions subaru really is the company that's all wheel drive you know everything they make except for the little sports cars been all wheel drive they know what they're doing and they have excellent all wheel drive vehicles if you're buying new it really doesn't matter what you buy except Listen to me, do not buy a six-cylinder Subaru. They've had problems throughout history with their six cylinders, three, three on each side boxer engines. Their four-cylinder engines today are really good and they've been good for a long time. They used to blow head gaskets, but that was 20-something years ago. The new ones don't really do that. If you are buying used and you're in Canada, check the frame. If it's rusted, don't buy it. You guys use a lot of salt up there. If the car's rusting away, two not buy it. They're all fine, just don't buy a six-cylinder one. I had a customer in Houston, a six-cylinder one. He was a professor. He was so peed. He had 55,000 miles. The engine was already burning oil. There were all kinds of rattling noises. And I told him, I said, they all do that. And it's going to cost you at least 3,500 to get rid of that noise. And he was so peed that he spent all that money in a car. And with that small amount of miles, the engine was going out. Now, if he would have bought the four-cylinder version, it wouldn't have had that problem. But on the other hand, the four-cylinders are a lot slower. The sixes are very fast, but they also break down fast too. Code X says, 
says, would you recommend a 10th generation Honda Civic? I've read you need to change the condenser and compressor most frequently. What do you think? It's not really outrageous. CRVs, they had more problems with the compressors breaking. They made the shaft too thin where compressor clutch spins and then the shaft goes in the compressor. They made it too thin. They were just snapping right off. The Civic's not particularly. The main thing is, it's a Honda. They always lose a little refrigerant. You got to add refrigerant every once in a while. I haven't run into too many problems with them myself. Other than if people don't take care of them, like you're saying, they run them out. Yeah, then it can destroy the compressor, and then the pieces can go in the condenser and jam it all up, and you got to replace that too. Just the way they were built, they weren't particularly prone. And I mean, I lived in Texas all those years, and it gets really hot there, and I didn't have any customers with any real problems with them. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, Remember to ring that bell!